Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Analysis Paralysis. I am Austin Harrison. And I'm Ellie Quatch. And I'm Ashley Anderson. And Analysis Paralysis is a game show. What? A show where <laughs> we talk about <laughs> game show would be great. A good. show where we talk <laughs> about board game news, uh, what we've been playing, crowdfunding, news at IV, and just, you know, what's going on in our lives a little bit. Uh, what are we talking about this week? Today we've got ancient board games, space bees, space bees, <laughs> and nostalgic games. Nice. Nostalgia is always good. Yeah. Nostalgia is always good. Except for board games, maybe. <laughs> maybe. You know. It's a good thing. Okay, so what happened with ancient board games? Yeah, just this week, a couple days ago, there was an ancient terracotta dice game tabla found in current Turkey. Okay. And it came all the way from 5th century BC, so a oh very long time ago. Mm -hmm. But they were doing an excavation that this one professor was leading, and they found it's it's really cool. It's a big piece of terracotta that has little engravings in it that was one of like the original oldest found board games. You can't really tell much of what's going on. It's just a bunch of scratches. Mm -hmm. It's in a language that I don't, don't understand, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, but I guess it like to me, it's like the rules mm -hmm. or maybe like where you roll the dice, which is like really fun. I always find it interesting just like thinking about BC because I don't have any concept of how no, long ago that was. Me it's like the the Cleopatra was closer to the iPhone than like the pyramids rule. Like mm -hmm. that doesn't make any sense to me at all. Um, so I don't know when this is from really, uh, but it old. seems really old. <laughs> I wonder how they deciphered that it is a board game some sort i i guess they speak this language which i'm gonna go ahead and say is uh phrygian i don't yeah. think that's right but maybe um they it's must old. like know the language and mm -hmm. like read the rules mm -hmm. and we're talking about rolling a dice or something mm -hmm. i like i remember reading other articles that are like old board games and especially like around rpgs i know that the egyptians had um d20s mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that like makes me think of like them playing egyptian rpgs and it's like uh, you got RPGs. smited by Ra. what do you uh -huh. want to do right. roll for initiative right. you know whatever um and so i'd like to think like it, it, it had to have mm -hmm. games and things they did oh yeah mm -hmm. and and things that they did for pastimes they had different you ut not utensils like forks but they had things to play yeah, with. yeah yeah different <laughs> things to play with i think there had to have been at least a few better than Monopoly, right? Oh, yeah. Like, they had a lot of time on their hands. Yeah, it's a low bar. It's yeah. like winter. We're, we're staying inside. They didn't what are we going to do? Well, they didn't, like, have to they go They worked into... a lot. Oh, no, no, so, they but they didn't have, like, a 9 to 5. It's by candlelight now. I mean, like, uh, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. thinking about game nights by candlelight. It'd be a lot harder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> reading little words this mm. close to your face. No reading. Um... Okay, so there there are a lot of old board mm -hmm. games, mm -hmm. um, but chess it's got to be pretty old. There's got to be some older than ones like that in Asia. There's like, like mahjong, mahjong, and I yeah. think Go is pretty mm -hmm. old. Go too. is pretty old, but I've never heard of something from fifth century. So yeah, this takes yeah. The, cake. the oldest one, Lily and I were looking into it. The oldest one is the Royal Game of Ur. Ur, Ur. one of the two. We're still the jury's still out on okay. that. <laughs> um, and that originated 4,600 years ago. Do you have to be royal mm. to play it? Probably. Yeah. We it's don't really equate to that. Oh, that's the one that was the first one that was commercialized, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, no, it's not. No, it's, no, um, no. Which one was the earliest? We, it was you guys sent me that Game one. of the Goose. Mm -hmm. Game of the Goose. Which 14, is a great title. 1480. Yes. Uh -huh. That's hilarious. All old. right, speaking of old board games, what did y'all play when y'all were young? Oh, well, not that long ago, I guess, compared to me. But, yeah. Uh, what did you play when, right. you were, when you were little? Like, not little kids, not like five, yeah. but like in your childhood. Mm -hmm. hmm. We played, the, this I still have a little bit of beef around with, with my mom. I'm the whole thing we played Parcheesi came out 2001 the year I was born um <laughs> Don't and out yourself like that. <laughs> but there's different there's four different um animals and it's Parcheesi the game of India that was uh -huh. the whole the whole thing mm -hmm. um the only thing I remember about it really because it was a while ago when I was playing it is you would roll dice and move and whoever got to the inner circle won mm -hmm. and but the the harsh feeling behind it is that my mom got rid of it, like at a mm. like a yard sale. I thought she just beat you all the time at it. No, um, I don't. Yeah, no. <laughs> Did you hear just good. beat you and stop? <laughs> Sorry. No, I thought she I started panicking. won the game won a the lot. Game. Sorry, <laughs> not beat you with the board game. Uh, no, Ooh. I had Parcheesi. Um, yeah. It had a beautiful like purple cover. Is this the version you had? Don't no. remember. Okay, no. There's a Ours few. Was great. But the one I had was the one that had was the, the game of India. That was the one I think I they, they might all be, but maybe not. Maybe I'm know. wrong. Maybe it is not all the game the of India. The one I had was yellow on the front. Oh, okay. Oh. So. Not mine. Probably not. Um, I, I like that game. Mm -hmm. I think it's almost, I don't think it's pure luck. It's not like no. uh, Candyland, right. which isn't really a game. And I'll die on that hill. 
Fair. I played, okay, so I played a lot of games as a kid. My family liked games, mostly like card games. But I remember playing 13 Dead End Drive. And this game was very unique because it had a little bit of like the hidden role mechanism where like you don't know who I am Mm -hmm. and we're like kind of working together to stop something from happening but I might make you think that I'm going to stop something from happening then do it because you have like your character and if they're the one that's like on this easel you just try to get out of mm-hmm. the the house mm-hmm. and if you get out of the house you win it sounds very um, complex for a kid's game yes yeah, it but does, you're, doesn't it's it? also a little grotesque because you're trying to kill the person that's on the easel if it's not you right oh. but it might not be anybody like if we're all three playing there might be like eight characters and we're just trying to get our character out of the, oh, gotcha. out mm-hmm. of the house so it it honestly has a little bit of veiled fate vibes and i didn't ever make that connection until like mm-hmm. way later Probably. in life um <laughs> but yeah we literally copied 13 dead i'm just kidding uh no but i i loved that game we played it a lot me and my sister did Mm. what about you my cousin had this monopoly Mm -hmm. game but it was pokemon version oh Oh, that's that's what got me nice into board games i mean monopoly's okay but the pokemon part of it was the best part you got to collect pokemon instead of real estate i was gonna say yeah you're you're like you land on pikachu do you want to buy it that kind of thing yeah exactly that's awesome um, I had a Star Wars Monopoly Ooh. on on as a video game. I played that a lot. As a video Ooh. game, it was a video game. I played that a lot. Wow, that's, I never would have imagined that crossover. No, C three PO was very prominent and quite annoying. Yeah, so, I, mean, I mean, I get it. That makes sense. <laughs> um, I think that there are a lot of bad games we played as kids and didn't realize oh, they were bad sure. while we were playing them. I mean, yeah. But I do remember that Penguin game. Do you remember the Penguin yeah, game where you had the game. hammer? Yeah, mm-hmm. that yeah. was a great game. Oh, Bring that game back. Break the ice? Yeah, oh, I think that, that might be what it's called. Yeah. It was great. That's how yeah. I remember it, so sure. It was great. I want to play <laughs> We can get right in now. for the studio. Nice. Yeah. Have it as a break room. <laughs> All right, so normally we'd talk about new game launches in the crowdfunding section, but not all games come to crowdfunding. And so occasionally I want to cover a game that I'm excited about that's not going to be on crowdfunding. And so instead of making a whole new segment, I'm just mm-hmm. going to sneak it into board game news if that's okay. Sure, yeah. make so the rules. So is coming out with a Space Bee game. Mm-hmm. And I like space, and I like bees. Space bees, Together. I love. Yeah. Um, apparently all the humans have died. And that checks out. It honestly is coming. They're getting revenge <laughs> for all the times we killed them. Yeah. Right? All the pollinators coming back for us. Yeah. Uh, but it's a, a worker placement game. Um, Love it. We were talking earlier about that like bump mechanic. Mm-hmm. Um, in a lot of games, when you you like want to take a spot, but someone else has already taken it, you like can't get out, get it, and that always hurts in worker placement mm-hmm. games. Mm-hmm. But this is like really fun where you can like move people out of that get spot, out of the way. and then it actually helps them too. Um, and so I'm really excited to try that. Yeah, that's not fun. It's like the B movie on on a I new level. Think, I don't think that's right. It's like a whole new level. It's a B movie. Just because it's a B. Yeah, yeah. Have you seen the the YouTube video where the B movie gets faster and faster every yeah. time? Yeah, every time. Yeah, oh my gosh. Yes. I love that's, the B movie. I had it great. on my Nintendo DS. I had the B movie. On your DS? Or like, I had like the B movie game. Oh, it's a You like game? go around and take them to work. Oh my gosh. Oh, goodness. <laughs> so great. Man. But I don't know. Are you all interested in Space Bees work placement? I would be, yeah. Well, I mean, work placement is right up my alley. It's it is. so niche. Space Bees. It's like, you know, it sounds like a love, death, and robots episode. It uh-huh. kind of does. does sound like that. Yeah, I wonder, like, like a hive or something like that. Yeah, yeah. there's like Who a knows? giant bee that's actually the mothership, and you move it around, mm. and that looks fun too. Makes so. sense. Mothership, like the queen I love bee. Mm-hmm. Yep. Huh. Interesting. Well, did we give us some closure on one of the worst capers of all time? The Gen Con bandits. The Gen Con, Gen Con bandits. bandits. <laughs> <laughs> they've been caught. We knew that. Good. And now they've been charged. All right. Finally. Yeah. But it wasn't as bad. Not as bad as mm-hmm. they, we, we thought. thought. Just because the value of the cards actually weren't 250000 Yeah. It's lower, I think. And due to that, the prison time is 6 to 10 years instead of oh, gosh. 10 years. It was originally like 10 to 60 years. Yeah. Like grand oh, larceny gosh. or something. Because uh-huh. like over 250000 is like really bad. It's mm-hmm. bad. If you're going to steal something, make sure it's under $250,000. Exactly. One cent under. $249,000 is fine. If I steal something ever. One. Don't let me wear a Moonraker's shirt. Two, maybe just stop me from making bad decisions. Speaking of stopping me from making bad decisions, you should probably stop me from backing things this week. Yeah. But instead of that, I'm going to ask you to convince me of something. So, <laughs> Lily, what are you backing this week? So I'm doing it instead of you. I yeah, see, yeah, I see. Yeah. Um, sure. My choice is mycelium. Uh, mycelia. Is that mushrooms? Mycelia. Yes, it's mushrooms. This is great. Uh-huh. I it's have no, no desire. <laughs> Bungai are amazing. He's a mushroom hater. <laughs> Austin's just cringing over here, <laughs> thinking about mushrooms. They're good. Basically, Mycelia, it's a strategy game and also sort of area control. You have tiling. Um, it's heavy strategy, though. It's one to four players, and it's 40 to 90 minutes. So 
so it's a mid-weight game, I'd say. Mm. And it's really easy to learn. Um, you only have to take two actions per turn, and you only have six actions total you can actually choose from. I love that. Yeah, so AP is probably not too prominent in that game at yeah, all. I'd hope. My family is hard to master. It, I, I, think I, I think I saw something about like a little bit of luck in it. Is that true? Cause I that, think there's like one dice or one, one dice. die. That can also help a little bit with AP. If you like mm -hmm. don't know the outcome of something, you can't think like past it. So right. that, oh. might be, that might be a good part I never part thought of that about too. that way. Mm -hmm. I, I, I cringed a little bit at the luck part. But once I, once I saw it's one dice, I was like, oh, that's not... So it's like Moonrakers for me. Bad. Like the, there's luck in if you roll two hazards or one hazard, but it's mm -hmm. not like you can mitigate it. It's not like all luck. So mm, I've had oh. very bad luck with yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. hazard dice, apparently. Okay, so while I hate mushrooms, I will play this game with you if you want. The, the art is beautiful. It does look so it is really pretty. So the game designer drew, like, illustrated everything. Oh, wow. So literally everything yeah. about the game. They, they did it all. So that's, that's really very impressive. Oh, yeah. And there, that's it's about the first, triple threat. It's the first, um, I think, the split stone. Oh yeah, and it's one of their first. Yeah, it's their, their first, first launch. Yeah. So okay, Whoa. we're we're Check supporting first time creator. We, mm -hmm. We'll do it. Yeah. I'll I'll begrudgingly let you. Can we get the that. deluxe version? With There's the, a deluxe version. Yeah. Well, is it, is it real mushrooms? Because no. No. <laughs> okay. Well, the opulent one has a wooden box, which is very nice. But that's like it's very uh, nice. A little pricey. <laughs> I don't know about that. Well, I'll look at the bunch. It's nice. It is. It is pricey. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it's funny that you picked something I don't like because mm. I also picked something. You, you don't, don't like, which is a Lord of the Rings RPG. Oh. I don't know that you don't like it. She just hasn't. I you haven't experienced haven't it. experienced Lord of the Rings. RPGs are still on the table for me. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I will. I we'll will leave it at that. <laughs> I will not say you hate it. Um, but this is the One Ring Maria, which is a RPG by. Um, oh no! I forgot. They're like one of the biggest RPG companies. Free League. Got it. And they are basically returning to the Lord of the Rings universe. They already had this system that they've been using, but they've also converted it to a D20 system, which is what D&D uses. And I'm really, really excited about that because I didn't want to teach my group a new system just to play with this setting. And so I am really excited that's in Moria. I am a big fan. It is a really, really cool, they've done a whole map that is just mm -hmm. like huge. Uh, there's a Balrog down there probably. Do you know what a Balrog is? No. It's a giant I demon so firing thing. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but if you don't know about the One Ring books, they do a deluxe version on the Kickstarters, and they are, like, leather-bound, and they have, like, foiling on them, and they are beautiful. I have the one for the first One Ring campaign, uh, and so I'm really, really excited to add this to that. Um, so, yeah, really pumped about that campaign. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm also doing something that I like, we all like, Burger Battle 2. This is one we can all get behind. <laughs> yeah. This is something that we everyone will like. I love I love food. We're kind of sticking on a food trend, not so much Austin, but yeah. um, <laughs> so Burger Battle. This is the second edition after the first one, and two to six players, fifteen to forty five minutes. I like how it's on the faster side, so you mm -hmm. can play multiple games, get different people involved. Andrew Heath was the designer of it, and he did such a fun job of just making it look engaging and colorful and bright. Um, and so essentially you get a card that has a burger on it and then you'll pick up different cards that have different ingredients that you can play for yourself to build the burger that you have, or mm -hmm. you can use ingredients to other, to sabotage other people mm -hmm. in their burger building experience. And there's pickles and like stinky breath, different, um, <laughs> cards you can breath. put on to <laughs> So it's, it's, it's just a hoot. This is right up my alley. Um, and the company's based out of Lexington, which isn't too far too away far. from us. Um, mm -hmm. So it, it grabbed my attention. I love I love me a burger, so if I can play games. I feel like food is going to be your theme. Food is, it's food and wacky animals cute, and worms. Yeah. Cute animals, weird animals and food, <laughs> and then Lord of the Rings and Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's though. a burger doing like a shuffle on the cover of this thing, <laughs> mm -hmm. and it was very cute. Also, remember how you were talking about Japanese just randomly being in your settings on Kickstarter occasionally? Yeah. Also happening to me, which oh. is super fun. Um, so I couldn't read the some of the details <laughs> of the page. I could obviously read the, the illustrated <laughs> elements. Uh, but yes, I don't know why Kickstarter does that sometimes. It just is like, oh, well, cool, I'm reading in Japanese today. Um, yeah, well, it it's happens. a learning process, it gives I me guess. practice. Yeah. <laughs> but it did look cute, yeah. and I will play it with you for sure. Okay, I love it. It seems a little take batty. Yeah, it is, mm. but I kind of I like that. If when it's you're a playing, short game. Yeah. I don't care about mm -hmm. take that. Yeah. Like, it, it can be take that. Mm -hmm. If it's eight hours long, I don't want that much take that. Low stakes. That's fair. Yeah, low stakes. Especially when you're playing with people that you know. So you're like, ah, 
Yeah. You know? Speaking of, take that. I love seeing your personality come out in a recent game we played. Do you want to tell everybody yes. about that? Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. We played Monikers, which if you've ever played Fishbowl, it's... It's like just the, Fishbowl. It's the, like, the official game where you have actual cards. It got a little aggressive. It's one of my favorite games of all time. I Ashley a got a little friends. aggressive. <laughs> Ashley was great at she's it. She's very though. animated. Yeah, she's really good yeah. at it. Uh, it's, it's, but uh, it yeah. was intense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Usually you don't trash talk your own team. While no. you play. <laughs> yeah. I, was, I, I was a little scared. <laughs> I was like, try harder. But to be fair, there were so many people playing. It, it was I, our team like didn't know. It was the third round, and there was a card that we got, Mom Jeans. I was like, since when was this in the deck? Yeah, so, yeah we never heard that Sometimes your, your team just never gets the card, and you just don't pay attention to the other team's no. turn, and you're like, I've never heard of this. No. And mm-hmm. so it, you just get stuck on it. I was like, how do you even act out a brick in a dr- washing machine on a trampoline? Not easily. Not no. easily. Mm-mm. So recently I played Decrypto with uh-huh. my friends, um, and it was wonderful. Um, Aaron and James were on a team, and me and my wife were on a team. Mm-hmm. And it is a really great game where you have four words, and you have to give both sides clues, but the other side doesn't know what your words are. And so oh, okay. it'd be a sequence. Like, I'd get three, two, one, and I have to get my wife to guess my third word, then my second word, then my first word. And she's just writing down the clue pattern of three, two, one, or two, three, hmm. one, or whatever she thinks it is. But the other team is writing down all your clues, and so over time, they're getting themes. So if I was doing tree, and I put, like, brown and bark, mm-hmm. they'd be like, okay, it's either a dog or a tree, right? Like, that oh, gives true. you, like, so they're trying to, like, start figuring it out. But then if I did leash... And I did have dogs somewhere else. They'd be like, "Ah, oh, it's that one." But so you're okay. trying to like mislead people where where your your clues mm-hmm. are. Um, it's really high stakes because it's only you get two misses of getting your own clue wrong or two interceptions where you get the other team's okay. uh, clue mm-hmm. correct. And so you're like sweating while you're writing these clues. And we had a really really great game where like you could either team could have won or lost mm-hmm. either turn. Well, that's and it was good. Amazing. When it's so, close. Uh, I get really James stressed and Aaron, playing thanks. that game. Oh, it can be stressful. James and Aaron, thanks for a great game. Mm-hmm. Um, and babe, good win. Oh, I had to plug it. Yeah, <laughs> she hasn't watched this show. That's fair. Oh, single tear. <laughs> well, I guess what I've been playing. We had a party and mm-hmm. we did. Um, what do you mean for the girls' edition? I Wait, love what do you mean. I don't even know what do you mean is. I don't even know. Let alone the girls' either. edition. I didn't bring it, but oh. <laughs> no, I'm not sure. I it. think it's such a fun game. You you do. Is it's it a like party game. is it like apples to apples but with memes? Uh. Mm, kind of. So you get like a, a word and then you put a meme for it? Uh, kind of. There's like these big, did you have like the big cards? The, yeah. When I played What Do You Meme, it's, they're like quite large cards. And there's like a funny picture kind of on oh. it, like popular memes. And then you'll put like a slogan or word sentence that goes with it. And it's, okay. So it's kind of like apples to apples. What did what did the girls edition add to that? Um, I don't think we played with the original What Do You Meme. Mm-hmm game sorry we the, hijacked your story oh, sorry no, no, <laughs> i was just no. trying to explain it for the people no for the girls <laughs> it, was my fault, my it was it was just um you had different colors you would roll a dice and then you would pick up the color of what that card is and then you would read out some sort of certain like rule and then people would vote on who would get that okay certain oh. colors or like some other certain colors would be like an action or something so huh. each color had a different like corresponding rule and then whoever had the most um cards like you need to dictate five, seven, ten, whatever. Mm-hmm. At the end, would win. So you're, you're, so you're trying to get cards. Than the, yeah. I have so no. But are the cards memes? Where do memes come Not into this? Not really. It has some like pop culture references. Yeah. Okay. But I don't think it's. It must tied not be the same. At all. Yeah. I don't think it's tied it's, at all to what do you mean? That's hilarious. <laughs> I just really hope that your friend brought a game that they thought was. <laughs> Uh, that game. I knew it, it was, was like in the wrong box. No, I know this <laughs> was what do you mean, but that games. was the girls. Like the, the girls it's for the girls version. For the girls expansion. Yeah. Okay. It was well. fun for a party game. Yeah. yeah. Party games are always. Well, we fun. had like over ten people, so I was like, well, yeah. what else? It's, else it's probably play? that. Yep. <laughs> but I did play bonsai. Nice. That was not a party. Game. That is not a party <laughs> yeah. game. It's a very. I still haven't played it. Oh, I have it at home. I could bring it in. You played a rule wrong, and you changed it, right? We played it like the first four times we played it. We played it wrong. Sure. It's shameful to say it, but we played it wrong like four times. I hate it when I do that. <laughs> and we were like, why are we scoring an absurd number of points? Like mm-hmm. over 200. And we were like, oh, this God. makes no sense. That makes no sense. <laughs> so we had to read the rules over and over. And we're like, oh. And once we got it right, we were like, oh, this is a fun game. What is real scores? Like maybe 100. Maybe 100. Maybe. Okay. So, so it like, wasn't like 10 and you were like, we're scoring 200. <laughs> yeah. Um, that'd be it happens. Mm-hmm. But it's a fun game. It's tiling. And I would love to play. Mm-hmm. That sounds very fun. Yeah. Huge news. Mm-hmm. 
ginormous news. Mythic Mischief launched. I was hoping we were on the same page. Yeah, so I was like, I was like <laughs> maybe it's another. We're we're really excited. You can tell uh-huh. it actually hasn't happened yet because we're recording this early because Mythic Mischief launch is going to be so intense. Uh, you didn't hear it here, uh, but we're assuming it went so well. Uh, it's yeah. the best. It's probably like at least a trillion dollars right now. Maybe four. I feel like that's a good guess with trolleys. Oh man! Oh, we've already revealed the trolley winner too. This oh, is weird yeah. being in the future. Uh, so maybe, maybe you guessed the right number of trolleys. Uh-huh. I've probably gained four pounds from eating all of those trolleys to count them. That's how we have to count them, right? We have to eat yeah, them. Yeah, we eat them, eat them. Yes. one by one. But the whole team, not just us, right? I hope so. Because I don't think I can eat. I'll eat them all. Four hundred and eighty-six trolleys. I'd be concerned for you. I would. Be. <laughs> uh, oh. If you haven't heard, there's a few big things with that. One, the app launched. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Two. There was a returning backer prize, or a gift, um, mm-hmm. that was the Howlite dice. Mm-hmm. And then the 48-hour reward, which is over right now, so I shouldn't talk about that. <laughs> but hopefully you got it. Yeah. <laughs> you can still buy it on the page. It was the Headmaster Mini. Uh-huh. Um, so, yeah, that's what's going on with us. We are probably mm-hmm. very sleep-deprived, and hopefully Indeed. it went well. <laughs> what do we have going on in the mailbag world? Not too much, actually. Not too much? <laughs> we don't have any mail from y'all, <laughs> which we makes need, me a little sad. We need more mail. We do. Yeah. That's what's in the mailbag. Yeah. What, what do you guys want to answer? Play games? I don't know. Send us pictures. We'll talk about whatever. Right, Ashley, what's your favorite color to play in a board game? I don't think we asked you oh, that. Oh, I haven't asked you that yet. Um, yellow, because my mom always took yellow, so now mm, I get to take yellow. You get to take yellow. I do, I I do not want yellow. You Why? can have it. I think I yellow might blue. be the least popular color. I think it is. So well, good I get luck. first pick yeah. on it. So. Yeah, so yellow. it works out really well for you. Um, we've changed our giveaway to be an, a Mythic Mischief pledge now for Volume mm-hmm. two. 2. Did somebody win that from last week? Yeah, let's see. So Should the person, drum roll it? Drum roll. <laughs> it's going to be John Tripp. Woo! John Tripp. John, reach out to us. Well, specifically Lily. Yeah. It's me. <laughs> reach out to me. <laughs> Find me on Discord, Lily, cat picture. Easy and Yeah, time. easy. Mm-hmm. And yeah, we'll add a pledge for you in the pledge manager. Can't do it on Kickstarter because we can't just add you there, but we can yeah. add you on the pledge manager. Mm-hmm. So um, awesome. Well, I am really, really happy that we are sleeping probably during this instead of recording Hopefully. it because, you know, we're recovering from the pledge manager. Nope, not the pledge manager, the <laughs> Kickstarter. That's how you know. Uh, already sleep deprived. <laughs> <laughs> already sleep deprived. Yeah. Uh, but thank you all so much for watching, and we will be back uh, on our normal schedule next week for yeah. sure. Mm-hmm. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Just to, like oh, talk or whatever, dude. My volume. Do-do. Guys, fun fact, this is actually a dress that I have tucked in. Another one? Uh Fun fact, (laughs) also a dress that I have tucked in. Oh. Oh, hey. We summoned him when we said Z-A-C. Zach, Zach, Zach. Zach. That say Z and then S on the back, and we'll just randomly hold them up because we know you might be watching us in your office. I always think that you guys can, like, see us in your office. Oh. When they can. Yeah, I'm never, I'm not. (laughs) I'm never, I'm not, I'm always.